and then we were able to make top eight out of coffee boys. And this one was stacked too. This isn't one of those ones where there's a lot of fluff necessarily to get there. Every single person in this bracket was a killer too. Oh You're yeah, absolutely. According, starting off with a footstool conversion. Boys. What is this? Ooh. What is this? Ooh. What is this? Let's go, Corsi. Nah, let's go. Not Tom. able to con not able to convert after that, but a solid I 38 see percent. Left. Corzing being very young, I think 16, 15, still in high school, just like the young I Theta commentator. <laughs> <for you. laughs> Don't let him in your head. There you go. He is definitely on Tallahassee's side. Rio getting a lot of damage on here. And really holding out the neutral, keeping Corzing in this disadvantaged state. And Corzing trying to come back onto stage, but Rio keeping him at bay on the ledge. An up be really close, not using the tether. Corsing doing the down throw conversions, and he's not going to be able to get much out of that. But he manages to push Rio off stage with that Zare, and he finally seems to be attempting to kind of hold stage. That also seems like one of those matchups where Lucas just kind of gives up the stage a lot to not get. Yeah, hey, Lucas gives up the stage a lot to not get slapped, slapped right out of the air. Except, except I get so good at catching you in the air or anywhere and just keeping you away with those large, powerful hitboxes. Rio is trying to use a lot of nares to start something, but not able to actually get it. Rio is not able to start something with these conversions, oddly enough. Yeah, but he's clipping him, and Korzing still got a ways to go before he can kill him. Uh oh. Yeah, trying to use the PK fire off stage. What is this? What is Korzing doing? Does Korzing normally try to edge guard with PK fire? Or Korzing normally does not do that, which is why I was pointing it out. That's fair. And Corzing, oh, no. oh, oh, oh going no. way too far out, losing that first game. You got it, Corzing. Mm. Ariel looked like he was ready for Corzing to recover in some yeah. way. But like Corzing just wanted to get back to stage in an unorthodox way to make sure he did not get hit. Yeah. But unfortunately, he did not get the right angle. And I think he was trying for a slightly more inward angle than what he got. So random? <laughs> uh, no, he's just messing. With, he's just messing with us. <laughs> Right. And Corzin gets right back into it. Right we back are, to Smashville, too. Okay. Yeah, running it back to Smashville. Let's see what we got on this second game. He had a really explosive start last game, but wasn't able to continue the conversion. And Corzin keeping it basic with the down throw to forward air. He probably realized that Rio probably knew that he was going to go for it. And fun fact, you can actually SDI Nair. It has like an SDI multiplier, a multiplier of minus two. Yes. To where... You can SDI really hard out of the last hits, and while they can possibly convert on your landing, that it's really hard to. Yeah. And that it's not really worth doing it if they know about it. Yeah. And Rio just doing a really good job at attacking on this percent and keeping Corsink in that disadvantage state. The trip on yeah. the forward air. And Rio's doing a really good job of using the Smashville platform to sort of control the air because. Yeah. Even though I wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily think I could be able to control Lucas so well in the air with all of the tricks Lucas can kind of pull out. Uh, uh, Rio's doing a really good job of, by virtue of having a place to stand on in the air, really keeping Corzing on his toes. Oh, and, oh, and he catches a side B. Is that it? That is a stock. What a good crazy conversion. Wow. Oh, no. Corzing is crazy. We're trying to land with the back air, not a very safe move, and Ryoka to try and punish it, not going to be able to take the stock with that conversion because it wasn't true. Because going to recover low this time, and Ryoka's just going to go for the edge trap. And Ryoka's causing right where he wants him. Meaty, meaty up tilts. The big meaty up tilts. Oh. Able to take that first stock off of yeah, Corzing. That was a gross up to it, too. I think Corzing even tried a tournament winner just get out of there, and it was nothing was fast in that. Yeah, now it's just back to neutral where Corzing's just trying to zone out and tap Rio with all these tethers. But Rio is able to keep him at the ledge again. This is one of the big problems that Corzing is having trouble on the ledge because Rio is ranging him out and just punishing him on at every turn. Rio's yeah, just walling him at this ledge, not able to let Corsing do anything, but Corsing finally gets back on stage just and makes a bad again. option. Ooh. Rio is thriving off of Corsing's bad options and disadvantage, trying to steal the stock with the up throw up air, air dodge read, not able to do it. You can also tell Rio has Corsing shook and oh no. Oh no, Corsing in such a bad situation. Rio is doing a really good job in his advantage state and Corsing trying to start something with his tether. And he's using tether a lot. Trying to go for the back air end of this game, but Rio still recovers. 
Real with a solid lead right now. The forward here is going to take that set 2 0. And I have to play my set now versus Wonder Bread. Good luck, man. Yeah, Corsing played really well and got some really nutty stuff, but Rio just played a lot more solid and a lot more consistent.